Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, we're going to give you another bolo. We're going to talk about Charlie Brown and the Peanuts character line in general. Charles Schultz actually created it, I think, in 1948 or thereabouts. And it actually wasn't originally called Peanuts, where the actual first characters appeared. But there's tons of items available across many different categories that you can find for Peanuts-specific items. 10 or 15 years ago, peanut stuff just didn't sell very well, and we didn't mess with much of it. In the last few years, the prices have gone up steadily, partially because the comic line was actually discontinued in 2000, and now they're just doing reruns at this point. So anyway, we're going to hop over to the screen, and we're going to show you some Charlie Brown Peanuts items right now. So here we are with Peanuts collectibles. Now, one of the biggest ones that I've run into are these Hunger Ford uh, promotional items here. Now, I don't remember what the chain is on these, but these look different than most of the other ones. This is the one that I always look for. The piano that Schroeder is playing there is probably the hardest to get piece from this entire set. Again, these are fairly scarce, not something I would expect to find every day. I've only found a few of them, but it doesn't take much to make some good money. 400 bucks for this lot here. There's a ton of other stuff available from Charlie Brown. There's animation cells and books, um, original artwork, uh, Sunday strips, comic strips, Sunday pages. All that kind of stuff shows up from this as well. I've got a few comics themselves in here. Again, it cross-category interest in some of these also because people collect comic strips, comic books, toys, movie-related, lunch boxes, all that kind of stuff. Tin toys as well, two cars, die cast, all that stuff they made. Even Lionel trains for Snoopy characters, so... I'm actually doing this video today because I was actually talking to a couple other resellers and they hadn't a clue who Peanuts or Snoopy was, which I was kind of surprised. I asked my kids, neither of them have heard of Snoopy either. So, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that it's out of fad for many people. It's not in the paper or even if it was, many people don't get the newspaper anymore. It's all online and you don't just don't see Snoopy related items here. Here's a lunchbox in excellent condition. Uh, I don't remember if it had the thermos with it. No, without the thermos, $137.00. 21 bids used to be a time when you may only got 50 bucks for this same lunchbox in the same condition sometimes even with the actual thermos so some items are going up some are going down snoopy stuff is hot right now so even the action figures go it's the great pumpkin charlie brown it's a tv special they released several lines of toys these are fairly scarce the halloween tie-in actually sells them this is from 2008 this went for 80 bucks so again it doesn't have to be old or new for the snoopy it has to be the right item so anyway let's pop on to the next one here a snoopy chess set they make chess sets for all kinds of stuff harry potter um, Lord of the Rings. Whatever you see a chess set of a character, it's usually worth something. This is fairly new. It's 70 bucks again with this piece here. Diecast cars. Now some of these are promos. McDonald's. Matchbox as well made them. I believe there are some Hot Wheel lines also, but these are probably Matchbox and promo cars as well. All diecast metal with actually rubber or plastic figures in them for the most part. 65 bucks. So this would be something I'd probably be able to pick up for a quarter a piece for the cars. Maybe a dollar for the Formula uh, race car that Snoopy's driving in there on the far right. So next one here. Now this is a scarce one. I don't know the story, the whole story on this, but this is apparently in a, a promotional piece that maybe wasn't produced all the way, or there's only a handful of these around. Went for basically $2,000. It's just another example of some rarities. There aren't many things that I'll buy ceramic and pottery of, but I usually buy anything if it's character related, like this type of thing. I sell a lot of Snoopy banks and ceramics and music boxes and figures. I don't sell as many of the hard plastic toys or things like that that are open from Snoopy, unless they're like the rubber Hungerford or something like that lines. I've also showed some Snoopy items. I have a house and things from the 60s from Snoopy, as well as some 50s items. Here's another vintage one. This is a music box. It spins in the middle. $1,500. This is a fairly scarce one, I would say, not just because of the price, but for some reason, there's certain designs that just never showed up that much on these. Most of these type of items for United Syndicate, you'll see multiple dates on them. It's usually the last date is when it was made or that version was copyrighted. So $1,500. This would be something you you could find at Savers. I found many actual music boxes, including Snoopy items at Savers. Ours are closed down, of course, but in the past I found them there. So anyway, now here's another perfect example of a ceramic fruit series banks. These are piggy banks for the most part. He's got two of them here, uh, two different sizes, same line, same series. You can see where the plug is on the bottom. 
$455. They're not nicely painted, in my opinion. They're semi-cheap and generic looking uh, to some extent. Sometimes they're overpainted, and sometimes they're missing spots, and like the seeds won't be lined up as well as they should be. It's from 76. So again, certain items from Snoopy have been taking off like mad. Now, this is a newer one. I've talked about some of these Hallmark ornaments before. These are actually wireless ornaments you could put there on the counter, and they would play together in unison like a band. 375 bucks. Now, I run into a few of these here and there. I'm never lucky enough to get the whole set all at the same time, but I'll set the few aside and see what happens over a couple months' time. Usually, I'll hang on to these till Christmas. They do go for a little more. Still sold for 375 bucks. Peanuts comic books. Now, I put this one in here just to address. Now, people ask why I don't have my books um, sent in and slabbed. I um, mean, it's like a CGC um, grading on them. Sometimes you don't get the results you want. And sometimes even when you do get the results you want, you don't get the price you want. This is an 8.0, which is pretty high. Anything in the 9, 9.2 or higher range is really high on the chart. 10 is usually the best you could get. I don't think I've ever seen a 10 in person. Um, this one went for 364 Keeping that in mind as well, this one went for 362 And this is far less of a condition than the actual other one we just looked at too. So just take that in consideration when you think about stuff like that. It's even from the same seller, mind you. So it's interesting on that, in my opinion. I've seen four or five different ratings by CGC, just CGC, that all priced in the same range. And then I've seen the same ones that are really low priced, really high priced. There's no rhyme or reason. It just depends on who's on on any given day for the most part. I just don't slab them. It's just not worth the hassle to maybe get some extra money and maybe not. So anyway, that's just it on slabbing. I just want to show that out there. This is the first issue, mind you, of the Dell uh, Four Color Series for Peanuts. Now, Four Color Series had like first issues for all kinds of Dell and other comic line series. There was like 1,500 or more Dell Four Color Series comics issued for all kinds of things. They did them for movies and um, Tom Corbett Space Cadet. The first one actually was out in there, which is one that I own and I do like that kind of stuff too. So anyway, that's what that is with this one. And again, here's the Hungerford, the set. A few of the characters are, are fairly hard to come by, like Linus, for one. Snoopy himself is semi-scarce. Most all of these sell for a horrendously high amount of money, if you can find them. They're similar to, like, the Pogo and Possum ones and things along that line. Just typical from that day and age that you will see. So, 350 on this one. Now, this is Fritz Ritz. This is the official... Um, First Charlie Brown in comic books, I guess you could say. I know that character looks kind of bad, but that's supposed to be Charlie Brown from all records that I've read on this here. It's missing a big chunk of the cover as well, too, as you can see. Uh, sometimes they did that when they were like um, returns from the newsstand. That way they couldn't be sold later on. They'd rip it off. Yeah, in fact, it says not returnable because it was damaged. Sometimes they'll rip the cover and then sell them cheaper, too, back in the day. I see them lots of times with the actual title ripped off. And those titles would have been returned to like the manufacturer and they'd get credit from just that part. And they could recycle the rest of the comic. Uh, this one went for 400 Now, here's a 1991 pewter piece. This is uh, technically not a limited run from what I've seen in the past on these. They do show up, again, something you may see at Savers. If you pay attention, you're going to be able to make some money on stuff like this. $300. Now, again, they still make new stuff, and this is a Medicom. Now, if you're into toys at all, you know what Medicom is. It's a very expensive. They do it all, a ton of Star Wars lines of toys as well, too, where you can like take off the costumes and things like that. They're usually very elaborate, very expensive uh, figures for the most part, mostly from Japan, from the ones that I've seen. I believe that's where the company is actually from. So $247. Uh, now, here's a known tin bus. This one here is well collected. There's not a ton of these tin toys for Snoopy that's worth a ton of money. Most of them are pretty generic. This one actually talks and has a button on it. If these work, they're always worth more. Um, most of the time, you'll see them rusted up. So these do sell for decent money in good condition. They can be taken apart and fixed by someone who knows what they're doing. So $204 on this one. And again, you'll see Snoopy stuff all the time, I would say. Um, coffee mugs sell. You know, pretty much anything Snoopy will sell. Even clothing lines will sell to some extent. Not as much as they used to. Mostly where the prices are rising in are these cookie jars, ceramics, 
figure-related, three-dimensional artwork style pieces like the action figures or the Hungerford rubber pieces and stuff. And there's several different sets of rubber pieces and rubber toy lines that you can find from Snoopy as well, too. Some look like the Fisher-Price Little People, but they're made out of rubber. Those do very well, too. I've got a set of those here. They come with a house even, too, which I've shown in a haul if you look back. 170 bucks for this cookie jar. Nice example here as well, too. Most uh, peanuts cookie jars, if they're vintage, are worth a couple hundred bucks. The older they are, the more expensive they go for. Snoopy cookie jars do not show up very often. Now, here's an action figure here, and it's a vintage toy, 1969. I have not seen it in the box. Usually, the figure itself, without the helmet, can still go for 50 or 60 if he has his outfit. Now, if he's complete like this, you see 175 bucks. Most of the figures that I buy, if they're Snoopy, I buy the smaller size. You do not want the giant size figures. I've had them before, and most of the giant size figures you see are from like the bowling set or something like that. There's one where you pull Snoopy's hand back and he rolls the ball and knocks over some bowling pins. That's where I see them the most. There's a Snoopy like a soap dish too that sells fairly well that is probably one of the most common pieces that I see. It's an Avon line piece, if I'm not mistaken, too. Now, here is another vintage item, music box again. This is a wooden hinged lid box, which is kind of odd for it to go for this money. $152. Again, the stuff is going up. This is probably made in Japan just by the looks, the construction, and the actual musical uh, box uh, stuff itself, too. In fact, I think I can... Yeah, it looks like it says maybe Japan on there, if I'm not mistaken. So, $152 on this one. Now, these bookends here, I've had the same bookends probably 10 or 15 years ago. And back then, I got 25 bucks for them. And that was considered a reasonable price back then. So again, the prices have steadily increased on the 60s and before Snoopy stuff, even the newer stuff too, like a Radco Christmas ornament with Snoopy still goes for good money. Of course, there's multi-category interests in a lot of these book collectors and things like that. People collect bookends, believe it or not. Just They have tons of bookends. Just like salt and pepper shakers, Snoopy salt and pepper shakers go very well. The vintage ones are the best, like from the 50s. There's some plastic ones, but most of the ones I see are ceramic. 150 on this set. And we're going up to the last item here. This is just a bobblehead, a vintage one. Usually you can tell the vintage on them. Usually the bases on these are um, like chalkware, plaster, basically. Let's see if we can see the base. So you can see, yeah, this is a perfect example. And if you look at the name, it actually says Lego on the bottom. Um, I'm sure it's obviously not the same Lego company. It's just another Lego named. Lego started in Europe, so that's obviously not the case. So most of the time I see these paper plug covers on the bottom here. This definitely looks like it's plaster in my opinion. It could be ceramic, but I honestly think it's plaster from what I've seen most of these. The head usually are made out of something different from what I see too. And this head looks like it's paper mache from what I see, uh, a fiber construction of some sort. It's possible the body is, but I really doubt it because when the spring sits on the, the post that holds up the bobble part of the head, it can get damaged really easily with soft material. So most of the time the head's made out of one substance and the rest of it's made out of something else. And you can see it's got a crack down it, paint loss from use in the whole works. Still went for 150 bucks. This is just a rough entry into the peanuts category. I buy something peanuts, you know, multiple times a month usually. And I'll buy the Sunday strips and the, uh, the paperbacks as well sometimes. First editions of them still don't go for a ton of money, but for the most part, if you get a vintage book from the peanuts line and it has a dust jacket, it's usually worth selling on its own for a decent amount. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. There's some more items that we look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.